remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Back with you once again, and there's a certain argument I've been hearing out of liberals a lot lately, and it's an argument that they use on all sorts of different issues. It's an argument that they use on issues like income inequality. It's an argument they use when it comes to crime. It's an argument they use when it comes to education. Almost any one of their pet issues, they'll use this argument. And it's the argument of some people are unlucky by birth. In other words, it's not uncommon to hear a liberal you're in an argument with tell you that, well, some people are just born into fortunate circumstances and other people are just born into unfortunate circumstances and it's just completely random and how is it even fair that someone born into good circumstances can have one life and someone born into bad circumstances another? Someone sometimes will say, what about a kid who, who's born in Compton or East LA? They don't have the same opportunities! as someone else and they make it sound they make it appear as though childbirth is just a random event that babies are just accidentally born and popping up wherever here there wherever and it's just as likely that someone could be born uh to a good situation as a bad situation is that there's some sort of unfairness there they feel but does that really make sense now i don't think it does i'm about to explain to you why now as i explain this I want some of you to bear with me a little bit here because what I'm about to explain is something that to some of you, you're going to think it's incredibly obvious. You're going to think it's something that kind of goes without saying. You're going to be shocked that there are people out there who evidently have to have this explained to them. Well, there are, so I'm going to explain it to them. So I hope the rest of you who have a modicum of intelligence will bear with me while I try to explain this to our liberal brethren who think that where you're born and what circumstances you're in are nothing but dumb luck. Babies do not come into this world by accident. Every childbirth out there, every childbirth in recorded history, with the notable exception of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, every childbirth in history other than that of Jesus Christ, is the result of the decision making of two people the biological mother and the biological father now i'm not going to go into the whole birds and bees discussion i will trust that you understand what action it is that is necessary for childbirth or conception to actually take place but be aware that every childbirth that happens excepting for jesus christ is the result of the decision making of a man and a woman okay it didn't just randomly happen the stork did not just show up and leave a baby on someone's doorstep there's no single mom out there who the stork just dropped a baby in her lap i'm sorry it's never happened okay except, except for jesus christ but other than that one never happened and what i'm telling you is this when two people make the decision to engage in the activity that may possibly conceive a child, some of them make that decision and take that action at the height of responsibility. Perhaps they've, they've married each other. Perhaps they have held off on having children until you know they have good jobs or they live in a, in a good area that has good schools or they live in a good suburb in a, in a nice area. Okay, and maybe they bought a nice house and they have all of those things set up and ready to go before they decide to have children. They've been responsible about their decision making. On the other hand, there may be some people, more than some people, who make those decisions irresponsibly. Perhaps they have not married the person whom they have conceived the child with. Perhaps they don't even know who the father was they conceived the child with. That does happen, by the way. Or perhaps they decided to engage in the activity that leads to conception without being in a position where they have a good income or where they have an education or where they can live in an area where you would actually want to raise a child. Not everybody's responsible in their decision making. Some people take the responsibility of, of childbirth and conception very seriously. And they set up things in their life beforehand. 
They have their college degree. They have their career going. They have some money in the bank. They have a, a good, strong marriage. They have a home. They have a, a house and a school district that's good. Other people just happen to get pregnant and call it an accident when it really wasn't because they're the ones that made the decision to engage in the activity that does result in conception. Now, I'm not saying people should be barred from engaging in acti that activity. We're a free country. Do what you want to do. All I'm saying is that when some people undertake an activity responsibly, they may end up having advantages, and that child may end up having advantages, over those who engage in that activity irresponsibly. And that's part of freedom. With freedom comes the responsibility of your actions, and with freedom comes the possibility that you may gain an advantage by doing things more smartly, more intelligently than other people do them. And that's really what we're seeing in this difference in circumstances that children sometimes have. Now, some of you are saying that I'm cruel and I'm heartless and this is, that this is not the child's fault. If a child is born into the ghetto to a single mom who doesn't know who the daddy is and the mom is addicted to crack or whatever, you're telling me that's not the child's fault. You're right, it's not the child's fault. It is the mother and the father's fault and they should be held responsible for that, you know, from a societal perspective, not from a government perspective. It is their fault. It's not the child's fault. I'll grant you that. But by the same token, it's not society's fault either. It's not society that made the decision for that crack whore mother to go out there and have conceive a child with some guy she doesn't even know. And I'm using the extreme case there, of course, to illustrate, but you get the idea. It's not society's fault that that happened. Therefore, why should be society's responsibility to rectify that? More to the point, why should the responsibility fall upon those people who live their lives responsibly, those people who did set things up for their child to come into a good environment? Why should they have their resources taken from to give to the child, give to the family, if you want to call it a family, to give to the people over there who behaved irresponsibly? You're taking the advantage away from the responsible people that they earned. And you're giving it to a mother and father, if the father's even there, that did not earn them. But here's the important part. Regardless of the differences in circumstances, regardless of what circumstances one might be born into, whether good, bad, or indifferent, the circumstances we begin our life with are not the sole determiner of our fate. We do not live in a caste system in this country. If you are born in the ghetto, it is not a guarantee that you will stay there forevermore. It does not mean that you have no chance in life, anything but. A much bigger influence on our individual successes, or lack thereof, are the millions of decisions that we make throughout our lives individually. Both large decisions and mundane decisions, they all add up. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, human beings are the sum of the decisions that they've made. Sure, your beginning circumstances might play a role, might have an influence, but you can overcome those, and we see it all the time. We have tremendous economic mobility in this country. That's something you probably don't hear very often. But it really is true, and that economic mobility goes both ways. People do rise up out of the ghetto and become successful. People do get born into successful situations and then blow it all. And a lot of people end up in between somewhere. Being born poor in this country is not a sentence to remain poor for the rest of your life. In fact, did you know four-fifths of the American millionaires in this country earn their fortunes within their lifetimes? I know, you've probably been told by the rich in this country to just have the money handed to them, but stats show you otherwise. Four-fifths of the American millionaires earn their money in their lifetimes. On the 2006 Forbes list of wealthiest Americans, only 2% of that list inherited their money. There is tremendous social and, and economic mobility in this country, and people every day rise up from the depths of poverty to become successful. And their stories are too numerous to mention. So those that say it's just dumb luck what circumstances you're born into, no, someone made the decision to create your life into those circumstances. Whether they did it responsibly or irresponsibly, 
That depends on the people. But that decision was made. You were not just a random event. But nevertheless, whatever situation you started in is far from where you are now. It's not something that determines where you end up. We have tremendous mobility in this country. And don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. No matter what your situation is. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.